Bank of Canada made its rate decision, keeping rates on hold at 5%, but signaling in the clearest way yet that the next move in interest rates is likely a rate cut and they're likely to remain on hold. So basically taking a, a hike off the table, uh, but not totally off the table. Barry Fenton, president and CEO of Lantera Developments, is joining me now for perspective on what this means for the housing market. What does it mean for you as a builder to get that kind of certainty? about the path of rates? Well, I think it means very encouraging. Uh, I must say that I think that a lot of us have anticipated the comments that came out today. And, and I think a lot of the banks are also anticipating that because you see the way mortgage rates are starting to come down. I kind of um, am a little disappointed with the, uh, with the governor because I kind of wish, and I also think that some of the banking senior people of different banks also feel the same way because I talk to them all the time. Mm -hmm. We wish that he would kind of be a little more aggressive on his commentary and say, you know, this is when we're going to start dropping rates. He did say the reason he didn't want to is to, he didn't want to put a false promise out there. What if something happens? You know, when he says June, which is what the market is pricing I in. like false promises, you like actually. false promises. Well, I, it can be hard, though, if that changes, especially if you're trying to create a business plan. And you and I have talked over the course of this rate cycle about just the speed of the rate hikes cause you to shelf some things, right? 100%, but what happens when you lift the, lift the lid off the, the pot? That's what I want to know. And you start reducing rates, he's not going to be happy when he sees the markets in general appreciate 10, 15, 20% a year. He's going he's gonna to be surprised. Like instead of doing it now and gently and quietly and taking a quarter point off whenever, like March, April, starts lifting he's going to lift and it's going to like it, there's going to be heat mean? up and I'm cutting I'm sorry yes, not yeah, lifting, yeah, not yeah. Cutting. but the lift will be in in home prices correct. I think that's correct so does that mean you're looking at those shelving shelved projects you're you're going to start maybe implementing them or going forward on financing them well we have financing in place and it's true we haven't gone out and launched anything new uh, but we just acquired a, a site a large site that uh, we're actually closing next week. So we're still full guns ahead. Uh, and, and in general, the, um, the banks are still very forward thinking about lending us money. So it's a good thing. There are other moves that are being taken to curb perhaps the housing market, but starting with immigration. And I'm curious what you think of the policy to put a cap temporarily on international students. Uh, I don't agree with it, but I don't think that really, and I get it with the immigration and, a, you know, more population and, and, he, and you know, helps reduce the, the influx of increases in pricing. I don't think it really does the job. I think that if you didn't have one person immigrating to Toronto, you would still have a heated market because I think there isn't enough product for the people that want to buy I want to underline that point because immigration is getting the blame for the hot housing market, but you're a builder, I don't what agree. do you see? I don't agree at all. I don't think that's the case. What's caused the problem right now is, is the interest rates and people not wanting to pull the trigger on something where they have to maybe commit at 7% or 8%. That's what's happening. What's also happening, which is really interesting, is that the rental market has just taken off. Mm -hmm. So where we were getting something like $33,000 a month for a 600 square foot unit, we're now getting something like $5,000 a month. That's so a that problem for affordability. For sure Maybe not be. if you're a landlord, but it's a problem for affordability. For sure. So if he's looking at inflation and how the whole equation works, um, he has to look at other things. What's the right way to tackle that rental piece? Uh, I think what they have to do is the governments have to provide incentives to developers like ourselves to say, go out, build more supply, build more supply we'll reduce Aren't you getting taxes. those? Haven't they done enough for you, Barry? Oh, not at all. <laughs> what else? What else? <laughs> not Give at me all. your wish list. Pretend it's Christmas. What do you well, want? Well, uh, I want to be healthy, but on yeah. the other hand, but besides that, no, I just think that we have to be more proactive. I think the government should run the run the government and no no disrespect as running a real business there's a lot of people hurting right now from in all directions and um, you know listen from a development standpoint you know we're going to see now that the costs for sure are going to come down substantially which is really kind of cool for us because we don't have to add so much to the bottom line when we're charging out to right. the purchaser because we'll be able to save it on the other side so there is a there is a silver lining with that equation what um you know, you talked about, my point was that there, there's been a lot to cut red tape, 
to to allow this. There's um, this thinking that okay, we'll just build homes on a template, right? Like a, that they that they're dusting off um, from the post-war period when we just needed to get homes. Like these are all things that they're doing. I'm just curious what else, and, and trying to limit the the supply side, the the immigration side, uh, or sorry, the demand side, the immigration side. I'm curious, like, what else are you looking for? Well, I, I don't really think any of that stuff works because in our model, believe it or yeah. not, I mean, you know, if we could sell 10,000 units a year, we'd sell 10,000 units a year. I think that from an affordability standpoint, we really, people have to start looking to be purchasing not downtown Toronto, but outside the city. Yeah. Which, and there really is a big variance between buying something downtown to buying something uh, up north or wherever. 